We're going to evaluate a few formulas and then talk about how to solve formulas for a specified variable. A formula is an equation that typically has an application, and I think we're ready to look at our first problem. We want to evaluate the formula k equals 1 half mv squared for the given values. Now, first of all, the instructions could be slightly different here. Instead of evaluate the formula, we could be asked to solve for k. And in case you're wondering, this formula is a kinetic energy formula that you might see in a physics class. We're told that m equals 2, which would be a mass of 2 kilograms, and we're told that v equals 10, which would be a speed or a velocity of 10 meters per per second. But for this class, all you need to know is that you have this formula, and we're going to replace m in this formula with 2, and we're going to replace v in this formula with 10. Let's do it. Now when we substitute values into a formula, it's usually a good idea to keep parentheses around those values. In case there are negatives we have to deal with, that usually helps us out. But in this case, here's what I get when I substitute m equals 2 and v equals 10 into that formula. Now we just have to follow order of operations, which we often call PEMDAS. And order of operations start with parentheses, and while we do have some parentheses here, there's nothing inside of those parentheses that needs to be simplified. So we'll next move on to exponents, and we do have an exponent, so we need to do that first. We can square 10 and and get 100. And now we have three numbers that need to be multiplied, and it doesn't matter what order we multiply them in. We can multiply the 1 half by the 2 first, or we can multiply 1 half by 100 first, or we can multiply 2 by 100 first. I will do 1 half times 2, because 1 half times 2 is just 1. Then I'll carry down my 100 into the next line, and what we have to do now is multiply 1 by 100. That gives us a final answer of k equals 100. The other option here is to use a calculator, and let the calculator do the order of operations for us, but then you have to know how to enter the numbers in the right way. So let's type this in. We have a 1 half out in front, and then we're going to multiply that by 2, and then we're going to multiply that by 10 squared. Typing all of that in does give us 100. We could have also typed 1 half, and in parentheses put the 2, and then in another set of parentheses put our 10 and squared that. Instead of just hitting the square button here, we also have the option of doing a power or caret 2, and that's another way to get the same answer. Let's look at the next example. Here's a fancy looking formula that has some foreign looking letters. We're going to evaluate this formula to solve for z, and we're given this x, we're given this letter here, which is actually a Greek mu, and we're given this letter here, which is a Greek sigma. And you don't need to know this right now, but in case you're curious, this is a formula that you'd see in statistics for what we call a z-score. But I'm just going to copy this formula down, and I'm going to plug the values that they gave us in. They gave us x is 120, mu is 100, and sigma is 15. Now as far as order of operations goes, anytime we have a numerator and a denominator, there's technically some parentheses around both the numerator and the denominator. So what that says to me is we need to simplify this 120 minus 100 first. 120 minus 100 is 20, so that's what we get in the numerator. 15 does not need to be simplified, and then all we have left to do is 20 divided by 15. Now 20 divided by 15 is a fraction that can be reduced, but let's take a look at what the calculator gives us when we plug 20 fifteenths in. We get 1.333 repeating, and if we want to tell the calculator that we want that written as a fraction, we can hit this math button, then we can just hit enter, that tells the calculator that we want this answer written as a fraction. We can hit enter, and it gives us an answer of 4 thirds. I think that an answer rounded to two decimal places is okay in this case. So we can call that answer good and move on. Here we're given a formula, and you may recognize this. This is at least part of the quadratic formula. We're given values for a, b, and c, and we're asked to solve for x. So let's plug in all of our values. Here's what we get when we plug in a, b, and c, and now we have some order of operations to do. Anytime we have anything inside of a square root, technically what we have is parentheses inside those square roots. Also, anytime we have a numerator or a denominator, we have parentheses around those. So let's start with the innermost set of parentheses up in the numerator. Let's leave everything else as it is and just try to simplify what is inside that square root. Well, 5 squared can be written as 25. 4 times 2 times 3. You can multiply those three numbers in any order, and if you do, you should get the number 24. Now, we're still working on this set of parentheses inside the square root, so we can simplify 25 minus 24 to just get 1. And now that 25 minus 24 has been reduced to 1, we can now take the square root of 1, which is just 1. Again, we have parentheses around the numerator and the denominator. If we simplify what's in the numerator, that's negative 5 plus 1. That is negative 4 in the numerator. And 2 times 2 in the denominator is 4 in the denominator. Now, if we divide negative 4 by by 4, 
we get negative one, and that is the final answer for this problem. I can zoom out on that a little bit so you can see the whole thing. This would be a good place to hit pause on your video. Take a good look at each one of these steps again, make sure that you understand everything, because I am gonna move on to the next one. Now this is a little bit of a different problem because we're not given a value for our other variables in the problem. We're just asked to isolate the variable y using our equation solving skills. Now the trick here is to pretend that every other variable other than the one that we're solving for is just a number or a constant. In this example, we're going to pretend that x is a constant. We could even make up another equation that looks exactly like this equation, where x is just some value. For example, if I just picked randomly x equals 3 and plugged that into that formula, we would have to multiply 3 times 3 and get 9. But then we have this equation, 9 plus 2y equals 5, and we can ask ourselves, how would we solve this equation? Well, your equation solving skills have to be strong to be able to do this. But I think what most students would say is you would start solving this equation by subtracting 9 from both sides. Why? Because that would give us a 2y by itself on the left side of the equation, and that would leave us with a 5 minus 9 on the right side of the equation. And then it looks like this term with the y in it is a little more by itself. Well, I think that's a really good plan. If we apply that plan to this original equation up here, what that means is to get y by itself, we should start by subtracting both sides of the equation by 3x. If we do that with our given equation, the 3x's on the left cancel, and we're just left with a 2y on the left side, and we're left with a 5 minus 3x on the right side. Okay, I think that's a great first step. Now if we look back at this equation down here, you might ask how do we get y by itself now? Well with this equation of course you would take 2y and set it equal to negative 4 just by subtracting 5 minus 9. But to get y by itself you would need to divide both sides of the equation by 2. So we're going to divide both sides of the equation by 2. What that does on the left is cancel these 2's and leave y by itself. And on the right we have negative 4 divided by 2. And we've succeeded then in getting y by itself. So in our equation, we should follow the same step. If we have a 2 multiplying this y, what we need to do is divide both sides of the equation by 2 to get y by itself. The 2's then cancel on the left, and we have y equals 5 minus 3x over 2. Now that answer is a pretty good answer. However, as you're going to learn in future sections, this formula is an equation for a line. And typically, we want to write the equation of a line in a slightly different way. So I'm going to take this a couple steps further just so that you see it now. What I'm going to do is divide the 5 minus 3x by 2. And to do this, we can divide both the 5 by 2 and the 3x by 2. Looking at this another way, what we've done is we've split up our numerator into two pieces, the 5 and the minus 3x. Then, since this is an equation of a line, we typically like these terms to be reversed. So the second term has a negative sign on it. So if I want these terms to be reversed, I need to write that as negative 3x over 2. This first term has a plus on it, so we'll say plus 5 halves. And just really quickly, one more way to write this is by considering this negative 3 halves to be a number that's multiplying x which is a pretty minor change, but something that is going to be important in future sections. So again, this answer up here is perfectly fine for this section, but when it comes down to it a few sections down the road, we're going to want to write the equation of this line in this form. So there was a lot going on in that problem. Again, feel free to hit pause whenever you need to in these videos, because I know they go pretty fast. But I'm going to move on to the next one, and the next problem says solve the equation for w. This formula, a equals l times w, is an area formula. It's the area of a rectangle, length times width. So because we're solving for w in this problem, we're going to treat a and l as if they were just numbers or just constants. But here's another way to think about these types of problems. We need to isolate w. So the question we need to ask is, what's being done to w? Taking a look at this formula, we can see that w is being multiplied by l. Because w is being multiplied by l, we need to reverse that multiplication to get w by itself. Reversing multiplication means dividing. So we're going to divide both sides of this equation by L. On the right side of the equation, the L divided by the L cancel, and we're just left with a W, which is exactly what we want. And on the left side of the equation, we just have A divided by L. And that is it for that problem. That was a pretty quick one, so let's do one more, slightly more complicated example. Let's solve this formula for H. In case you're wondering, this is a volume of a cone formula, where H is the height of the cone and R is the radius of the cone. You don't necessarily need to know that, you just need to know how to get H by itself in this formula. So the question you might ask is, what's being done to h in this formula? Well, lots of things. So I'm going to rewrite this formula, and let's just take this one step at a time. This one-third out in front essentially says that h is being divided by 3. We need to reverse that operation, so to get rid of that one-third, and to start to get h by itself, we need to multiply both sides of this equation by 3. 
On the left, that's going to give us a 3v. And on the right, that's going to cancel this 3 with this 1 third. And we're going to be left with a pi, an r squared, and an h on the right side of the formula. Now let's look at this formula again and ask what's being done to h. Well, h is being multiplied by all of this stuff. It's being multiplied by a pi, and it's also being multiplied by an r squared. So if we want to reverse that, what we need to do is divide both sides of the equation by that pi r squared. What that does on the right side of the equation is it cancels the pi's and it cancels the r squared, and it just leaves us with an h by itself, which is exactly what we want. On the left side of the equation, we just have this 3v divided by pi r squared, and there's really not much we can do to simplify that. So that is going to be the final answer to this problem, and I think we can call this video there, and I look forward to seeing you in the next one.